coming up next on Newswatch. Community members are banding together for a possible new business opportunity. There's expanded construction on one of the busiest roads in Athens. The men's basketball team battles Moorhead State tonight in the CBS semifinals. Newswatch starts right now. Broadcasting live from WOUB TV in Athens, this is Newswatch. The Mason County Sheriff's Office is on the search for a missing seven year old girl. Good evening, I'm Carly Bell. Thanks for joining us. The search for Del Delia Clark was put on hold around 5 a.m., but picked up around 9 this morning. Mason County Sheriff Greg Powers says Clark left her grandparents' house to walk across the street to her great-grandparents' house. She went missing on the return trip. She's been missing over 12 hours. Clark was last seen in Jeffers Ridge off 16 Mile Road, about two miles from Route 35. She was wearing a dark, bl dark blue jeans and a green shirt. 911 dispatchers and the Athens County Commissioners are one step closer to a contract. The Commissioners voted to accept labor contract negotiation recommendations on Tuesday. The dispatchers contract was set to expire on December 31st of 2015, but they've been working under a contract extension. Negotiations have resolved most issues except wages and health insurance premiums. The state appointed fact finder Jack Butner recommended a 3% increase per year of a three-year contract for wages. He also recommended that the premium percentages be kept the same for 2016. The home sharing industry has come under fire in Athens, mostly for zoning concerns. The issue came to light last month when an Airbnb host was not allowed to rent out a spare room in his house because the city had no way to regulate it. Yesterday, a panel met to discuss the best ways of addressing the city's concerns. If those issues are resolved, Athens homeowners could see new business opportunities. WOUB's David Michael has more. The panel was called My House, My Rules, and one point every panel member agreed on was that the home sharing business could bring added revenue to homeowners and the city. I think that properly regulated um, and with the right uh, support, we definitely can provide more choices to travelers, which is going to bring in more business, and more business is going to be good for the entire region. Much of the discussion centered on Airbnb, a website that gives people the ability to rent portions of their homes for temporary lodging. Abe Alasoff used Airbnb to rent out a spare room, but was shut down by Athens City Council. Joe Savaris, the executive director of the Ohio Hotel and Lodging Association, said there are other problems with these rentals. The discussion that kicked this off today was about zoning within the city of Athens. And I think zoning within the city of Athens is actually the easier uh, issue to uh, take up than the macro sense of how are we going to uh, oversee and foster these new economy platforms. He said these online rentals need to be regulated the same as hotels and motels in Athens. Those requirements would include a transient tax, regular inspections, and background checks. Olasov said he'd be open to some of those regulations, but not all. I'll accept the transient tax. I mean, I think that that could go, uh, I mean, I'm willing to do that. I don't want to have a code inspector in my house or, or something of that nature, but I'm willing to accept a transient tax. Yeah. If we can just get... Uh, where I can, am I able to legally do it with some minor regulations, I'd be happy. Both community members and students attended the panel. Athens City Council member Patrick McGee said he encourages discussion on the topic and added that council is definitely taking notice. Alasaf and Savaris say they plan on working with each other in hopes of moving the business plan forward. Good evening from the Newswatch Weather Center. I'm Kaylee Shaw. Another beautiful day in Athens, currently 65 degrees and partly cloudy skies. We do have some gusty winds southwest 16 miles per hour and gusts up to 22 miles per hour. Now across the region, temperatures also in the 60s, 73 still in New Martinsville, 70 in Marietta, and we will cool down a bit tonight, but not too much. Still pretty warm for your afternoon temperatures. Now we do have a system of rain headed towards us, so get out and enjoy those warm temperatures while you can. Thanks a lot, Kaylee. The city of Athens is applying for a half million dollar grant for a new access road between Stimson Avenue and Mill Street. While there is currently an access road that lies right next to the Mill Street Village apartment complex, city leaders say that the road isn't in good condition. At the same time, the city wants to construct its third roundabout at the intersection of the new road and Stimson. The city plans to have the roundabout completed by August of 2017. 
In Butler County, a 14-year-old boy is charged with the February 29th shooting at a Madison local school's campus. James Austin Hancock is acu accused of shooting and wounding two students in a school cafeteria. Hancock has been indicted on four counts of attempted murder, four counts of felonious assault, and a count of inducing panic. Butler County Prosecutor Michael Moser says Hancock could be sentenced to the Ohio Department of Youth Services until his 21st birthday. The Ohio House is proposing more gun regulation laws. The bill would require people to surrender firearms to law enforcement if they've been convicted of domestic violence or have been served with a civil protection order. The bill would allow judges to order the surrender while a temporary restraining order is in place. This bill was introduced Tuesday as a way to mirror federal law. Representatives say this legislation would make it harder for people convicted of domestic abuse to access, to access guns. Coming up next on Newswatch, we'll have the latest updates regarding the bombings in Brussels. That story, plus more trouble in Flint. We have new updates on the investigation. These stories and more when Newswatch returns. really care. They care about my grades, they care about my opportunities, they care about my experiences, they want me to succeed. They give those opportunities to the students. My professors have been extremely approachable. Literally their door is always open. You can go to them with pretty much anything. Everyone knows your first and your last name and where you sit in the classroom. I really never feel like I'm being talked down to or just being taught material. I always feel like I'm having a conversation. And they want to share those opportunities and those experiences with us. University students really have a huge sense of pride in our campus, in our school, and in our education. People don't come to Ohio just to go to college. They come here to become a Bobcat. It's a really unique atmosphere. Bobcat pride is having that natural camaraderie. Bobcats are just happy to be Bobcats. My favorite time of year at Ohio has to be homecoming. When the alumni come back, you can see that the love of this university doesn't fade. Once you're a Bobcat, you're always a Bobcat. The student body here at Ohio University absolutely is a family. The students support one another. You become this unit, this big, friendly family unit. There's this connectedness. You feel a part of something. Driving in on the highway and just seeing the red bricks and the trees again, it's just like coming back home. There's great students, great professors. You just walk around campus and think, oh my gosh, I can't believe I go here. I feel like I matter in the community and I feel like I matter here at Ohio University. It's home. Athens is home. My professors really care. They care about my grades, they care about my opportunities, they care about my experiences, they want me to succeed. They give those opportunities to the students. My professors have been extremely approachable. Literally, their door is always open. You can go to them with pretty much anything. Everyone knows your first and your last name and where you sit in the classroom. I really never feel like I'm being talked down to or just being taught material. I always feel like I'm having a conversation. And they want to share those opportunities and those experiences with us. The city of Brussels had a moment of silence as the city mourns the victims of yesterday's terror bombings. One arrest has been made in the Anderlecht district of the city, though authorities have not specified the connection between the suspect and the attacks. Two brothers have been identified as suspects. Ibrahim El Barouki was one of the suicide bombers at the airport, while his brother Khalid is responsible for the metro bombing. They were accompanied by two unidentified men. A manhunt is now underway for one man police believe planted a bomb at the airport. They say the other accomplice is now dead, a result of the airport bomb. Officials released today that the suspected bomb maker for the Paris attacks is one of the two dead suicide bombers at the airport. The subway station explosion happened about an hour later. Around the world, people are holding u vigils. U.S. students that are studying abroad in Brussels have spoken about their perspectives on the bombings. I only live maybe seven minute drive from the airport, so I could hear the explosion go off, but I didn't really think anything of it. I'm, I'm sitting at work and I'm getting messages from my friends. My one friend, she works maybe half, not even a quarter mile from uh, where the explosion happened in the subway. I got out of my car and I actually really smelled the smell of explosions and fire and everything around me. It's just such a mess and at that point you see white blankets. You think, oh, it's going to be to cover up the mess or whatever. And then afterwards you hear that 24 people died. I don't think I have fully realize what happened just yet. I think if we make this more secure, they're going to find another way to hit us. There is now a makeshift memorial at the metro station where the deadly bomb went off yesterday. 
Here in the States, the race for the White House pushed forward yesterday with contests in both parties playing out in Western states. Reed Binion reports. Western Tuesday was a big night for the presidential frontrunners, with Hillary Clinton thanking constituents and supporters for her win in delegate-rich Arizona. I'm also very grateful to all of our volunteers who are working so hard uh, in this campaign across this great state. Donald Trump tweeting his thanks to voters in Arizona, where it appears his much-repeated promise to deport undocumented migrants may have paid off in a state where illegal immigration is a hot-button issue. Cruz came in a distant second place, and Kasich even further behind in third. Bernie Sanders put a positive spin on his Arizona loss. Last poll that I saw, we are five points behind, and we're gaining. Sanders later winning in Utah, and in Idaho to the delight of his supporters there. In Utah, tonight in Idaho, and tonight in Arizona, there are record-breaking turnouts in terms of voting. Ted Cruz was also victorious in Utah, where voter turnout was so high that some locations reportedly saw ballot shortages. Cruz's win in the heavily Mormon state came after former presidential nominee Mitt Romney said he'd be voting for the Texas senator. I'm Reed Binion reporting. Former presidential candidate Jeb Bush endorsed Senator Ted Cruz earlier today. The next Republican primary is April 5th for the state of Wisconsin. The next Democratic primary is Saturday, March 26th for the states of Alaska, Washington, and Hawaii. The final release of the Flint, Michigan investigation is out. The state of Michigan has been found, quote, fundamentally accountable for Flint's water crisis due to the decisions made by its environmental regulators and state-appointed emergency managers. Governor Rick Snyder released a final report today saying that failures at all levels of government are the reason why Flint water users were exposed to the lead-contaminated water. The drinking water became contaminated through the use of old pipes after Flint switched the drinking water sources. A New Jersey police chief has agreed to temporarily step down from his post while he's investigated over a controversial email. Critics allege he sent the email to his officers, encouraging them to commit racial profiling. Tony Yates reports. The email anonymously forwarded to the ACLU, allegedly written by Wyckoff Police Chief Benjamin Fox and sent to the 23 officers on the force. It says in part, profiling, racial or otherwise, has its place in law enforcement when used correctly and applied fairly. It says, quote, don't ask the police to ignore what we know. Black gang members from Teaneck commit burglaries in Wyckoff. That's why we check out suspicious black people in white neighborhoods. It says, too, white kids buy heroin in black NYC neighborhoods. That's why the NYPD stops those white kids. The ACLU sent a copy to the attorney general's office. It's outrageous. Uh, it's outrageous and if he sent the email, it's clear that he needs to be fired. The attorney general's office responded immediately saying, we have received the complaint from the ACLU and a copy of the email at issue. On its face, the email appears to be a clear violation of the attorney general's policy, strictly prohibiting racial profiling by police officers. We are conducting a full investigation and will take all appropriate measures. The Bergen County Police Chiefs Association says, it is aware of the memo purported to have originated in the Wyckoff Police Department, allegedly authored by Chief Benjamin Fox. We will wait for the results of a full and fair investigation before offering any further public comment. We did reach out to the Wyckoff Police and were told Chief Fox is not available for comment at this time. Someone who takes that position shouldn't be serving as a law enforcement executive and frankly shouldn't be serving anywhere in law enforcement. Chief Fox told the Wyckoff Township Committee Tuesday night he would go on leave during the investigation. He said it was in the, quote, best interest of the department if he stepped away. Fox also told lawmakers neither he nor his department engage in racial profiling. On Wall Street today, the U.S. stock market tipped slightly downward. Here's a look at stocks of local interest. Showers and thunderstorms in your forecast for tomorrow and your Easter weekend forecast coming up when Newswatch returns. Body here at Ohio University absolutely is a family. The students support one another. You become this unit, this big friendly family unit. There's this connectedness. You feel a part of something.
driving in on the highway and just seeing the red bricks and the trees again, it's just like coming back home. There's great students, great professors. You just walk around campus and think, oh my gosh, I can't believe I go here. I feel like I matter in the community and I feel like I matter here at Ohio University. It's home. Athens is home. Ohio University students really have a huge sense of pride in our campus, in our school, and in our education. People don't come to Ohio just to go to college. They come here to become a Bobcat. It's a really unique atmosphere. Bobcat pride is having that natural camaraderie. Bobcats are just happy to be Bobcats. My favorite time of year at Ohio has to be homecoming. When the alumni come back, you can see that the love of this university doesn't fade. Once you're a Bobcat, you're always a Bobcat. The student body here at Ohio University absolutely is a family. The students support one another. You become this unit, this big, friendly family unit. There's this connectedness. You feel a part of something. Driving in on the highway and just seeing the red bricks and the trees again, it's just like coming back home. There's great students, great professors. You just walk around campus and think, oh my gosh, I can't believe I go here. I feel like I matter in the community and I feel like I matter here at Ohio University. It's home. Athens is home. My professors really care. They care about my grades, they care about my opportunities, they care about my experiences, they want me to succeed. They give those opportunities to the students. My professors have been extremely approachable. Literally, their door is always open. You can go to them with pretty much anything. Everyone knows your first and your last name, where you sit in the classroom. I really never feel like I'm being talked down to or just being taught material. I always feel like I'm having a conversation. And they want to share those opportunities and those experiences with us. Welcome back to the Newswatch Weather Center. I'm Kaylee Shaw. Another beautiful day in Athens today with above average temperatures. We got up to 67 degrees today with our average being around 55. We're still at 65 degrees right now with partly cloudy skies. We do have some gusty winds with winds southwest at 16 miles per hour with some gusts up to around 22 miles per hour. Your temperatures though across the region still looking pretty nice. Still around 70 in Ironton, 73 New Martinsville, pretty much partly cloudy skies across the region, but from the west to east, those clouds will be increasing as the night goes on. For tonight, not cooling down too much. 50s for your lows tonight, 55 Ironton, 57 in Ripley, so get out and enjoy these warm temperatures tonight. You'll probably only need about a light jacket to bundle up. Temperatures for tomorrow also looking nice, but we do have some chances for some rain and thunderstorms increasing as your day goes on. And here's a look at what's going on. We've got this nice organized low pressure system, and tonight we are in this warmer air. That's bringing us those nice warm low temperatures tonight. However, this is going to be pushing into our region for tomorrow. Uh, Precip will start from west to east, so Columbus and west, you will be seeing some rain earlier in the day. Those chances for rain are going to increase throughout the day and into the afternoon, and we may even see a few rumbles of thunder with these showers headed towards our region. And those will last into your Friday, but for tonight, 56 for your low. We will stay dry again. Get out and enjoy these warm temperatures before the rain heads our way for tomorrow. 68 for your high tomorrow. Another warm day, but definitely bring the umbrella out because there's some good chances increasing for rain as the evening goes on. Here's a look at your day tomorrow. We will start out dry around 55 for your morning and t um, excuse me, these Precipitation chances will increase as your day goes on. Again, a few rumbles of thunder are expected with this, around 80% chance of rain for your afternoon. And now take a look at Friday. There's some cool air behind that system, but the rest of your seven day looking nice spring-like temperatures. Back to you. Thanks a lot, Kaylee. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration says it has found a Navy boat that's been missing for 95 years. The federal agency, along with the U.S. Navy, announced Wednesday the USS Constanoga had been discovered near the Farl Farl Farland, excuse me, islands off San Francisco. 
The fleet tugboat went missing in 1921 with 56 crew members on board. Officials believe it sank while trying to dodge a storm. The Conestoga, the Conestoga was the last U.S. Navy ship to be lost without a trace in peacetime. It remains underwater. Your eyes, well, you only have two of them, so you might as well take care of them. In today's Health Minute, Mary Maloney has tips on maintaining good eye health. Your eyes are an important part of your health, and maintaining them is something that should be done on a regular basis. Maintaining good vision starts with a balanced diet. Nutrients found in certain foods like salmon, tuna, dark leafy greens, beans, and nuts can help prevent common vision problems such as cataracts. If you smoke, quit. In addition to heart disease and lung cancer, smoking can also lead to vision loss. Studies show smokers are more likely to get optic nerve damage, cataracts, or macular degeneration than non-smokers. Wear sunglasses. You want a pair of sunglasses that can provide high UV protection. Research shows UV radiation can cause damage to different parts of the eye, including the cornea. Digital eye strain. Try using an anti-glare screen on your computer or even adjusting your monitor to eye level. Taking a few minutes to step away from the computer every couple of hours may also help. And visit your doctor. Getting regular eye exams can help spot and treat diseases early on. For today's Health Minute, I'm Mary Maloney. Thanks, Mary. Good evening, everybody. I'm Eric Duke II. The Bobcats had their pro day today, and the CBI semifinals tip off tonight. More when we come back. They really care. They care about my grades. They care about my opportunities. They care about my experiences. They want me to succeed. They give those opportunities to the students. My professors have been extremely approachable. Literally, their door is always open. You can go to them with pretty much anything. Everyone knows your first and your last name and where you sit in the classroom. I really never feel like I'm being talked down to or just being taught material. I always feel like I'm having a conversation. And they want to share those opportunities and those experiences with us. University students really have a huge sense of pride in our campus, in our school, and in our education. People don't come to Ohio just to go to college. They come here to become a Bobcat. It's a really unique atmosphere. Bobcat pride is having that natural camaraderie. Bobcats are just happy to be Bobcats. My favorite time of year at Ohio has to be homecoming. When the alumni come back, you can see that the love of this university doesn't fade. Once you're a Bobcat, you're always a Bobcat. The student body here at Ohio University absolutely is a family. The students support one another. You become this unit, this big, friendly family unit. There's this connectedness. You feel a part of something. Driving in on the highway and just seeing the red bricks and the trees again, it's just like coming back home. There's great students, great professors. You just walk around campus and think, oh my gosh, I can't believe I go here. I feel like I matter in the community and I feel like I matter here at Ohio University. It's home, Athens is home. My professors really care. They care about my grades, they care about my opportunities, they care about my experiences, they want me to succeed. They give those opportunities to the students. My professors have been extremely approachable. Literally, their door is always open. You can go to them with pretty much anything. Everyone knows your first and your last name and where you sit in the classroom. I really never feel like I'm being talked down to or just being taught material. I always feel like I'm having a conversation. And they want to share those opportunities and those experiences with us. Welcome back, I'm Eric Three the Second. After righty, Eddie Fitzpatrick allowed three eighth inning runs last night. The Bobcats fell to Youngstown State eight to five. Not only did the Penguins have four wins going into last night, but the Bobcats were down after three, or after the first and came back. Three seventh inning runs gave them a five to four lead, but in the end, the Cats couldn't recover. Ohio will take the field again this weekend when Mid-American Conference foe Northern Illinois comes to Bob Wren Stadium. But not all Bobcats were losers on the diamond yesterday. By striking out seven and allowing only five hits, Savannah Joe Dorsey led the Bobcats in a 7 to nothing victory over the Thundering Herd. Seven shutout innings was the boost that the Bobcats needed after dropping the first game of the doubleheader, 8 to nothing. The Bobcats open up their max schedule Friday against Western Michigan. While the Herd swung and missed, the Bobcats swung themselves into 13th place yesterday in the MSU Spring Citrus Challenge. After three days, the team finished 63 over par leading the pack with a 9-over-265-stroke tournament, junior Haley Herenowicz finished tied for 13th. 
The ladies will have a week off before they travel to Richmond for the Lady Colonel Classic. Now, the men will return from the Kings Mill Intercollegiate with the 12th place posting a 47 over par scorecard. Junior Peyton White paced the Bobcats, ending the tournament tied for seventh, shooting a three over throughout the tournament. This is his eighth career top 10 finish and third this year. The Bobcats will be back in action April 2nd at the NYX Hoosier Invitational. Another important event that will, be, that will begin April 28th is the NFL Draft and 12 Bobcats participated in Ohio's Pro Day this afternoon. Scouts from the Bengals, Patriots, and Steelers were taking long looks at centers Luke, or center Lucas Powell, defensive back Ian Wells, and defensive lineman Mike McQueen. All three players are getting late round consideration. Now in the convo tonight, the CBI semifinals are gonna tip off sometime in the next 10 minutes. The Bobcats are hosting Moorhead State tonight, looking to advance to their first CBI championship game. Ohio carries a lot of momentum and lots of confidence from its comeback victory against UNC Greensboro Monday night. The winner of this matchup will take on either Vermont or Nevada Reno in a best of three series starting March 28th. It's an exciting time for Ohio as the women hold an undefeated 2-0 postseason record. That, but their next stop is Philadelphia. They will have their first road game of the WNIT Thursday when they take on the Temple Owls. The Bobcats beat the cross the border rival Marshall in round one and Virginia Tech in round two, which was Ohio's second win against the team from a Power Five conference. Winner of round three will play Michigan in the quarterfinals. Now, while the Bobcats are battling for tournament championships, the Cavs are trying to hold on to the number one seed. The Toronto Raptors are only a game and a half back with three weeks left in the NBA season. Cleveland will have a chance to increase its lead tonight when the Bucks come to town. It's an exciting time in the NBA season. One story I didn't get to talk about was the NFL rule changes. Carly, how do you feel about that? Oh, man. <laughs> I am not about those at all. Those new, uh, the, the new penalties, child blacks are getting eliminated. The touchback rule is not the 25-yard line. I'm just getting sick and tired of these rule changes. I really wish they would just stick it back in the 70s and 80s when people would just hit and go as hard as they can. But anyway, with all these news headlines and also terrible uh, regulation changes, in my opinion, of the NFL, we could all use a smile today. And who can't resist these cute little guys and gals? Today is National Puppy Day. It was created to bring awareness to the need for care, to care for orphan puppies. Be sure to give your four-legged friend a squeeze today. Let's toss it over to Kaylee for one last look at our Easter forecast. Thanks, Carly. We're staying warm tonight with your low around 56 degrees. We do have a cold front headed at us for tomorrow, bringing us a good chance for some showers and thunderstorms. Now behind that cold front, some cooler air, 47 for your high on Friday, much cooler temperatures and take a look at the weekend though. We're warming back up 64 for Saturday. Nice chance of uh, nice temperatures again for your Easter and for the rest of your seven day. Back to you, Carly. Thanks a lot, Kaylee. Stay tuned to WOUB. Here's a look at what's coming up tonight on your public television station. And that does it for our broadcast this evening. Thanks for watching. I'm Carly Bell. Stay tuned for the PBS NewsHour coming up next. And remember, you can find the latest news anytime online at woub.org. Have a great night. students really have a huge sense of pride in our campus and our school and in our education. People don't come to Ohio just to go to college. They come here to become a Bobcat. It's a really unique atmosphere. Bobcat pride is having that natural camaraderie. Bobcats are just happy to be Bobcats. My favorite time of year at Ohio has to be homecoming. When the alumni come back, you can see that the love of this university doesn't fade. Once you're a Bobcat, you're always a Bobcat.